Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ayhan Mahdi. Uh, I'm from the University of Manchester. Uh, I'm working on a project to implement blockchain in the world of science and research. <laughs> Recently, in the past few years, we've been hearing in the, new hearing in the news a lot of things about blockchains. Uh, Dubai wants to become a blockchain city. The European Union wants to invest in blockchain and move all of its digital assets to a blockchain-based network. United Nations are tracking their uh, supports and aids to, the to Syrian camps using the Ethereum blockchain. All industries, bankings, many other uh, sectors wants to use blockchain in their um, daily life. <laughs> so what's a blockchain? Often referred to uh, as the trust machine of the internet. It's a protocol, a protocol to create trust between peers, uh, which forms an immutable database where records can be only appended uh, to its database. No deletion, no alteration of the records, only append. Uh, all records will be transparent to everyone on this, uh, on its, on this network, which creates a distributed ledger. Now, I would like you to imagine that we are all here holding a notebook and we are keeping tracking of the transaction that is happening in the room. And not only keeping track, we are also um, verifying each other's work. So if I altered something, changed some fact that happened, everyone here will see that I changed it and I will not be trusted anymore. So this is, this is how blockchain will work if, if we don't have computers and, and internet. So what do we need to, to create a blockchain? The first thing we do need is um, a distributed network where we have a self-dependent peers and nodes. Uh, the, all resources are shared equally between everyone. No central unit that can control everything and it, it, it will be really danger if it's attacked or hacked or or, or if it becomes busy for some reason. So what are these nodes? Uh, it's hardware and software. Any computer ca that runs something called a smart contract, uh, and its responsibility is to verify and hold the data that is exchanged through the network. What's a smart contract? Uh, it's a, prog a program which acts as a validation process automated regulator in the, in the internet. No interference by any other party. Uh, and it gives the a correct question to who can we trust? So what happens with the tra transactions on the blockchain? The first thing that happens, it will be saved uh, as the last record on the block and to be changed to, chained to the previous block. So all blocks are dependent on each other. Also, it's verified by everyone on the network. And how is that done? How is verification done through cryptography? In, in the world of computer science, we, we, when we say cryptography, we mean three things. Symmetric encryption, which, which is the normal encryption where we have one key or formula that is used for encryption and decryption. Asymmetric encryption, where we have two keys or two formulas. One is for encryption, and the other is for decryption. And the hash, the hash functions are like a fingerprint for information. For example, the, the, the fact or the information of my name is Ayham has a fingerprint of one, two, three. But if we change it to my name is Ahmed, it will be four, five, six. <coughs> So it's a, new, a, a unique value of, of information. Blockchain can have access control. Blockchain can be private and controlled by an organization where rules and smart contracts are created based on some standards defined earlier, or it can be public, used by everyone, uh, without, and everyone can access this blockchain without permission. And there is a third way of creating blockchains, is the consortium blockchain, where we have the validation process done by some nodes, and the other, the, the other nodes can only read the data 
and check what's available there. So why blockchain is very secure? Uh, because of the consensus mechanism. Uh, there's two way of reaching consensus during block in, in the blockchain. You either prove that you've done some work to reach your latest value, or you prove that you have some state in your in your machine, or you have that you have some storage in your machine, and and many more. And in private networks, uh, we have the practical Byzantine fault tolerance. I will explain both of these the proof way and the Byzantine fault tolerance in a bit. So the first thing, proof of work. Um, okay, I'm going to show you how blockchain are made. For example, we have block zero, the very first transaction in our network. We have the data that we recorded on this, uh, on this transaction and the timestamp when this data was recorded. Also, all together, they, they will form something called proof of work, which is the signature of this, of the, of the first block. The next transaction can be maybe some, uh, the first one, maybe someone bought a car. The, se the second transaction, someone bought a house. So uh, the second transaction will have data also and the timestamp when this transaction was recorded and the previous work that was recorded in the previous block. And this goes for the rest of the, of the blocks that, that's stored. The second way of reaching consensus is the Byzantine fault tolerance. Now, imagine that we have four commanders with four, arm, with four armies in four different places. So they want to attack the castle, and the only way to attack the castle is for all of them to attack together at the same time. So they start communicating with each other, communicating with each other, with each other and they decide they will attack at 9 a.m. But for some reason, the third, the third guy here attacks at, eight, eight, at 10 a.m. So three of them attacks, only one doesn't attack at the, situ at the supposed time the army loses. In computer science, we have a solution for this problem. It's called encryption, as I've shown you before. We can ensure that all communication are secret between these commanders all of these commanders receive the correct message, and all of these commanders are the commanders that I should send the message to, not someone else. So we, we've seen a single blockchain in the network. So now we want to see the whole network. How does it, how does it act in the world of blockchain? So um, we have six nodes here. The first transaction generated a proof of work of A1 and the next transaction, A2, and it's only E2 because the first transaction was A1. If we took this transaction alone, we might have different signature, B1 or something else. So the third, the third transaction would be A A3. Now here where things get interested. Node F here was compromised, let's say, and they changed the second transaction from A2 to A4. Directly after that, the third transaction will be, will be A5, for example, and it's not the same as everyone else in the network. So everyone's watching, and node F is not trusted anymore, and will be kicked out of the network until it have the correct data to be validated with everyone else. So why is that, why is that blockchain is important for cybersecurity? In the morning, um, we talked about inter uh, someone talked about Internet of, of Things in depth. So I would like to add a few points on that, that um, some cars has more than 50 million lines of code, and everything is vulnerable, and everything has bugs. With, with Internet of Things growing wider and wider, we have more vulnerabilities and more threats. Also, yesterday, Symantec uh, released a report that malwares on smartphones are, are growing by, um, I think, 54, 54% year over year. So we have more threats, obviously. Uh, no de denial of service attack. Um, so any node, if any nodes becomes busy for whatever, whatever reason, 
we don't really care because every other node can do the work that this node is supposed to do. No server failure. We have no server already, so we can forget about servers. Protection from compromised nodes. If any node becomes recording some false information, it will be caught directly and will never be trusted anymore. And it's all to reach integrity. So in, in, in cybersecurity, we, have, we need availability and confidentiality and integrity. All of these three, cyber, uh, blockchain can provide, but there is no architecture that can have integrity as, as good as the blockchain integrity because it's, it's, co it's supported by high cryptography. Uh, no data manipulation. We, we, cannot, we cannot manipulate data. We cannot alter data without, without everything, without everyone in the network watching us. Um, so who creates the blockchain? Normal developers and people. But we have three organizations that are very famous in this. Um, the Ethereum, Hyperledger, and Quadra. So first of all, the Ethereum, uh, they, are, they were the first who introduced the term of smart contracts. Um, they can provide different type of blockchains, public, private, or consortium. Um, they have different way of reaching consensus, proof of work, proof of state, proof of storage. What is Hyperledger? Hyperledger is developed by the Linux Foundation. Um, it's, best op it's the best option for private blockchains. Uh, they have, they have, the, the trust is built upon the practical Byzantine fault tolerance. And they also, they also have a smart contract in a language called Chain Code. Codra is also worth mentioning. It's not very famous as the first two, but it has a unique way of reaching consensus th through the uniqueness of its transactions and the validation, of course. Uh, and it gives a higher level of privacy also. So who uses the blockchain now? We have a lot of people are investing in blockchain. And these are some of them. Uh, the Blockchain for Science, which it's an organization that I'm part for, of. We are looking into implementing blockchain in science. So we have a tamper-proofing research. Uh, we have the auditing company, EY and Deloitte, uh, PwC, uh, big names in banking such as HSBC, Barclays, medical companies, and the British Blockchain Association here in the middle are, are, is an association who wants to create standards for blockchain so that it does not, it's not random anymore. So what does it mean to have blockchain in science? There's something in science called a scientific workflow. Unfortunately, not, every, not everyone is respecting this workflow. Some researchers are changing some facts just to have their papers released and published. But in, if, if we implement blockchain into this, into this process, nothing can be changed so, and everything can be trusted. Data sharing, it's, it's an open door for open science. Peer evaluation and evaluation research, which is very important. Research funding, also if, if blockchains prove that research are true and research are processed in a correct way, people will become more interested in investing in research. In the economics, we will have a secure exchange. Sending money to China will be just like sending an email to China. Now, now currently, um, third parties tend to cut some fees out of transactions just because they are providing trust. But if trust was automated, these fees won't be cut, which will save money. And we believe that for some banks, they can save up to $20 billion per year for if they implement blockchain. We'll have a clear audit trail. Everything is transparent. Fast identity check. In 2008, uh, a famous bank called Lehman Brothers Bank declared bankruptcy because of untrusted loans were given to people. And many other sectors, of course, they can benefit from, ex from uh, blockchain. Health sector, uh, 
government and their public records, music rights, industries, car licensing, all of these can benefit, can benefit from blockchain. But the, the key to this, to this technology is currently we trust things because it's organizational, because we have some system that force, that force trust, which is really costly and expensive. But what if it was technological? We'll have zero errors. Everything will work as it's supposed to be. We'll know who owns what, who made this Apple device or this Nike shoes, um, who owns this intellectual property, who graduated from which medical school. Yeah, and the challenge is, oh, well, nothing comes for free, of course. Uh, so in some networks, in some blockchain networks, we have a, a long time to reach consensus between its nodes. And its scalability is still under debate. Some reaches are, are being made to answer its scalability. Uh, and of course, we have implementation and switching cost. We have, uh, depending on each business case, we need to know if it's really feasible to switch, to switch into a blockchain. <coughs> yeah, and that's everything. Thanks a lot, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, just one moment. Uh, if, if there's anyone who's interested in blockchain, I highly recommend this book, The Blockchain Revolution. It's it's a very good book, and if anyone has any question on blockchain, I'll be ha I'm more than happy to answer. Here's the book. <laughs> Thank you.